Today's session is looking at how to build chess stamina during the game. It's the element of patience, not getting frustrated and looking at any advantages that you potentially have, look at the advantages the opponent potentially has and being able to take that time and bring patience into the game and develop that patience. That's the stamina that we're talking about here. It's not the stamina of playing multiple games. It's the stamina of actually in one game, taking time to make the best move that you believe is going to work for you in the game. So we're going to go in for a 40 minute, five second game. Okay, so nice and steady. All depends though, the opponent might just want to play blitz and just finish the game off dead quickly. But these movements that we're doing at the minute, we're fairly familiar with, so we can bring them out. So they brought the queen back. We're going to develop the knight. We don't need to move slow in this aspect. It's the development towards the mid and end game. If we take too long, I think they will just blob. So we'll just push here a little bit, which is a shame because we're trying to practice the patience aspect. Let's just bring the bishop here. So they're going for patient moves. They're just um, pushing pawns out. I'm actually going to bring the bishop here, baiting the pawn. The reason why I do the baiting pawn thing is because they lose tempo in terms of developing their other pieces and they're not falling for it. So we can go and castle. And as you know now, I'm thinking, okay, do I need to give my king some company? Is my king saying, no, just rest easy, get your pieces developed into a good position. And they have attacked it. So we have baited the pawn. We have baited the pawn anyway. So we do have choices. We can come here. We don't really like this one. If you've seen the videos I've done recently, um, cause it just kind of blocks this um, B pawn, but it does still have the diagonal, but it's biting on granite at the minute. So we can just bring the bishop back. No harm or foul. There's no half open file facing their king. The only half open file is this one here. So we can bring the bishop out and look to x-ray through to the queen. Obviously the bishop comes and defends. That's all pretty standard. So this transition now, we've got the pieces out. Our queen is still on the back, but is there movements that can start building towards gaining some advantage? So they've got their knight out. They've got most of their pieces out. This bishop's not come out yet. The knight's come to protect. Knight is also blocking the queen. So does this give us a moment to start attacking here? Not really because the bishop is protecting and this pawn is protecting. But we can attack their knight. If they take, then the pawn is going to be on their knight and we have the x-ray through so we would get their knight. So they're probably not going to take. We hope they take. But doesn't mean we're going to win the knight. Um, okay, let's see. Let's have a look at this. So we're attacking this pawn, but the bishop's protecting. We're attacking the knight. Queen defends. White square bishop could be looking maybe to do this. Attacking the pawn twice. And at that point, then the knight takes. So I think we'll bring the bishop here, putting a two on one onto the pawn. The knight will be fed up and say, no, that's not happening. So taking time to have a look and see what advantages we can bring to the game and looking at what advantages. So they take, so we're back again to this position. It's just that it's slightly different because the knight can defend and take the pawn off the board. Yep, so there's nothing else really. There's nothing fancy taking there, he just takes. So let's just take the bishop, then the knight takes, is on our bishop. So we don't have the two on one anymore. So we'll simply take the queen off the board with a check first. So our bishop is going to be under threat, really. It's, um, do we move the bishop? Do we take this knight, double the pawns? They might be looking for us to do that because then their rooks can come and face our king and then the bishop has got the diagonal as well. So we could take and he could take ours. Then both pawns are... 
So interesting. The bishop does have an extra through to their rook, so we could attack their knight. Obviously they take and they're gonna double anyway. Which is the better one? I mean, we've got the rooks attacking the rooks, but I just feel there's a little bit more activity to do. I'm going to attack the knight. I think they'll just take the bishop. So it's that patience thing that we're talking about, building that stamina, trying to find the better moves looking at the move that you first looked at and then saying is there something a little bit better or um, worse or and it's not saying what we've done is right it just feels right to me so they're not interested in castling at all they're just coming defending so we don't get the pawn doubled I suppose mind you it will double the pawn still so they're not interested in that they're really probably looking at this area here with the diagonal of the bishop from that kind of movement so if the knight takes, pawn takes, the bishop can't take back. So the bishop has to move, probably attacking the knight, then the knight takes the bishop, doubles our pawns. Okay, so none of, none of that needs to take place. We can just attack their rook. The bishop's not got the diagonal yet. Knight can simply take, well, the knight can't take now because he's got an x-ray. So I'm going to attack the rook now. I'm just going to keep the tension there. There's moments to keep the tension and moments to not keep the tension. I feel we might be giving them, yes, the advantage by taking. So he's saying, yeah, take me, take me, take me. I don't care. All right, so we could just take the rook off the board. It's a higher piece. Okay, and we can attack again, but let's just um, hang fire. Dark square bishop, they don't have a dark square bishop. Could keep the bishop on the board. Hmm. If we take the knight, I think the pawn's going to take the bishop. What's the position looking like here? What can I get? This knight can attack their bishop for free. But we've got a bishop under attack. So if we take the knight and then attack the bishop, obviously the bishop's going to move, but feels nice. Then we can look to attack their rook. Does their knight block? Still does have attack on us, so basically looking probably to double the pawns, like we said, because he does have a check on our king. So I'm thinking we can, okay, so they've moved the bishop, it's just saying, this pawn's got no protection, well, it's got protection with the knight, and the knight is attacking the bishop, and we wanted to attack their rook, so if we did attack their rook and the knight took with a check on our king, we would have to take and then we would lose the rook, so I think they're going for a bit of cleverness there. Could bring the bishop here, attacking this pawn. Does it get trapped? I'm actually going to bring the bishop here. Because it's still protecting this area, so we potentially can go and attack the rook. We might be too late to the party, because he's probably coming to attack our knight. Lots of probabilities, maybes, but the knight does have dance ability. Definitely not up here. Oh, yeah, so it's down attacking something. And if we went here and he takes the pawn, we can't go here because the bishop's protecting there. And do, 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 let's see, the knight could come and attack him. Right, so we're going to could bring the rook here just defending. I think that's what we're going to have to do, looking at all of the uh, manoeuvres that are going to be available. 
could bring the bishop back protecting the pawn but then it's kind of locking the rook out of the way but what is the bishop actually doing up here really um yeah we only moved it because the knight was there um, attacking it we wanted to keep this um, file here so in essence we could bring the bishop back couldn't we so bring the bishop back he's got a white square bishop himself knight can do something maybe looking to come here to attack the pawn coming around has he got pressure on here i think just bringing the bishop back protecting the pawn because the rook's protecting the bishop at the moment don't need to over complicate it and then we do have space to attack the um the rook either here or here then we can hit the knight with the pawn make some space for the rook okay so the knight is in attacking the pawn so we can attack the pawn and where are we whirlwinding the pawn to here because then he's got a two on one on the pawn then i suppose we can push but then the rook can take this pawn here so let's go and attack their rook before they hit us which way is better this way Sitting this pawn that the king's protecting and can come this way protecting that pawn if we go this way go this way they only got there to go so let's go this way attacking the rook obviously coming up to attack the knight or we well, can't go there because the bishop will take so slow steady development it's quite painful because you can also see what the opponent can be doing and it's so slow and yes yeah, so they've attacked it so slow and painful so we could attack the rook because the knight is still on this pawn don't forget but if we attack the rook he gets the knight so it looks like we're going to lose this pawn if we don't find anything to attack again so maybe that was not the right place maybe the knight should have gone here yeah, because then the rook wouldn't have been able to attack him. So our rook could come and defend. The knight's not in a trap, is it, if he it takes? It's not in a trap. Let's find that better move. Move the knight. Do, 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 do. We can get hit again. Push the pawn. Knight takes, push the pawn onto the rook, rook comes down for the pawn on the corner. Don't really want to block the bishop either though. Let's bring the rook and protect the knight, we're opposite the king. Knight takes the pawn, yes, on the bishop. Push the pawn onto the rook, the rook takes the bishop. Rook takes the rook. Wouldn't it be two pieces up, wouldn't it? Right, so we have our opportunity to move the bishop. Probably moving the bishop here. Then he hits the knight with the pawn, then the rook comes down again to that same position. The rook comes down, takes, we take, he takes. Yeah, he's got we'll have two pieces against us. So this is the point where we have to bring out our positive thinking now let's go with moving the bishop out of the way supporting the knight i think the rook is still going to come down the knight's probably yeah let's do that so they're plus two now and in recent games that you will have probably seen us play we've been like minus three and uh, minus a rook and all that top sort of stuff and yet we've still been able to find some advantage in the games so this is why i'm not getting twisted with this 
and it's really about trying to work my pieces together and see if we can find those better positions. This is building your chest stamina. It's not about playing like some sort of super grandmaster type thing. It's about playing what you what you play right here, right now. How can you make an advantage out of it? We're disadvantaged at the moment, as it would say with the computer. So we're looking to trade off, even though it's um, plus two. Um, I'm not bothered. Let's just go and trade. I don't think there's anything squinchier for us. We could attack the could attack the rook now, seeing as the knight has moved. See, looking for some sort of fork or something like the other. My king is way away. So we could use the pawn just to attack the rook. He can always come down and attack it, I suppose. Knight's protecting it at the minute. Maybe give some space for the king. So he has poor majority on this side, on the um, A and B, C. He's got poor majority on the other side as well. So this is the end game. And we're going to take the rook because he's given us it. And I've proposed the take back, but this game is about building your chest stamina. How to build the chest stamina and really taking time and patience over the moves. Okay, so we've got a rook, but it doesn't mean we've won the game or anything like that. This pawn doesn't have any protection, so we can take this pawn with the bishop. Just taking time. So now we're currently plus one. And as you've seen, we didn't do anything magical and it's not over yet. So the knight is going to be looking to escape somewhere. So if we do attack it, does he have a fork on our king and the rook? Not really. So I'm going to attack the knight and see where it's going. Probably safest is here. Do we get the bishop trapped? We have to be careful. Um, that would have been nice if the king wasn't there, but it's, it is there. Okay, right, so we could hit this pawn. If they do take, then we can take. Oh, look at that knight. Look at it looking for that move. It'll get a fork on us. Damn. Right, okay. So we've got 30 minutes, take our time now. What do we want to do? We're equal on the pawns on this side, but our pawns are split. He's looking for magical forks. So that's definitely not going to work. He just drops there, which is a shame, isn't it? So I'm going to push this pawn while we're thinking of, obviously he's going to need to open up his white square bishop to act as a blocker. So it could end up being a draw still. Yeah, so exact move. So what else is there that we can think about doing? Could attack the knight to see what it's wanting to do. It's obviously going to whirlwind around or is it getting some sort of... So I'm going to just give them something to think about maybe. So I'm sure they won't want to trade down at this point. So I think they'll attack. And we're trying to look for that position here of being able to push here, but it's probably not going to happen. So this is the point, the, this end game, you know, the end game is where it, it makes all the difference. Yeah, they know exactly what we're trying to do to put the knight there blocking this pawn from coming up there because they know we want to come here. Hmm. Okay. So this person is making it really hard for us. Can't push here because the bishop will take. Push this pawn, maybe stopping the bishop from traversing so far, but... Yeah. They could use these two pawns against our single pawn as well. So we've got to be mindful of that. 
I think the bishop's coming sitting here to get into the game. Yeah, well, they're using the pawns against our single pawn. Mm, very clever. So, we bring the bishop here, kind of baiting this to come down. Make, try to make space for the rook. Do we bring our king up? Don't really like it with the knight being here, but I suppose just bringing the king up is not going to hurt at this moment. Dancing, don't know, maybe not. Got 29 minutes, so we can take a while. But the length of time of the game doesn't mean you're going to select the right move. You have to be practicing how to do that. So we could sit our bishop here. It's just that this pawn is going to see it off. And we could hit this pawn, hit the head of the snake. What are we missing? We're going to hit the head of the snake, see if we... He's still got these two linked pawns here because of the double nature. Oh, and the knight's getting in. They moved there quick, didn't they? So he can't go here because he's going to get taken. What is the knight doing there? He can come here. That's where he's going. So we take, then he takes. And then he's got open space in front of his king. Then we can move this up. Don't like the knight. Take. And then we come here he's wanting to go there he can still go there though because i'm not going to take him off the board am i so if we bring the bishop here and then he still goes for it anyway attacking the rook Rook can come here attacking the pawn. Mm, looks a bit sketchy, but it, it feels like it should be okay if his knight's going there. I think his knight is going there. Oh, look, I can't attack the bishop pawn, can I? Because the bishop's blocking. So the knight comes here. I'm not actually hitting the pawn. I'll have to move the bishop. <laughs> <laughs> I see calculation. Exactly. So come here. Like we said. Just looking at his could attack it again. Bishop takes up round. Bishop takes. So there's not much going for it. It's attacking our bishop with the pawn. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's much going for it after all. But we can move the bishop and just take the pawn off the board with the rook. They've obviously put some thought into this. So if we go here, then the knight goes somewhere to protect the pawn. Maybe, no, let's bring the bishop here. They look a little bit mad and huffy. So we should be able to take this, but what I don't... Is he attacking the rook? We can take... Has he got a check on the king? No, we take him there. So he's coming down to... Oh, do we trap ourselves? No, because we come back. Right, let's not... We take... King comes down to attack the rook. But then we would take the knight off the board. So let's not think he's doing that. So come across with the rook. Now has the knight got a whirlwind. Because of this file. 
comes down, puts a check on our king. And he's got this pawn here with the knight. Uh, he's got a check on the king with the knight. We don't want to do any of that. So maybe move the king out of the way altogether. Move the king out of the way altogether. Hmm. Yeah. Let's take it and move the king out of the way altogether. Don't get involved. We think. So he's coming here. It's showing they've left the game. Okay, that's how to build chess stamina in my world um, in the build up to the um, over the board tournament. Got to be playing these longer games and um, attempting to build that chess stamina, that patience and trying to find those better moves as, as we've been um, showing in the recent videos. Um, it's not saying it's 100% proof, you know, pressure or the way you're thinking or the design that you're seeing in the end games or the transition from your opening into your mid game might be wrong. But it all depends on what the opponent does, how they react to that. And it might be the worst position for you um, in the build up towards the mid game. But the opponent might not find those better moves that a computer would be suggesting. So you just keep plodding a lot, plodding away um, because humans make mistakes. Humans have different designs on things. Humans will try different things out, you know, in the games. If it looks a bit unfamiliar, then, you know, they'll throw caution to the wind and you don't know what's going to happen. Like in this game here. Yeah, we were disadvantaged and then somehow the opponent gave us their rook. You know, they were two pawns up, was it? Maybe three pawns up. And just before that, we've mentioned that we were in the previous videos that we've shown, uh, we've been like two pawns down, three pawns down, minor pieces down, and major pieces down as well. But it all depends on what the opponent does with that advantage. And if you keep plodding away, trying to improve your own mantra, your own concept and looking for better positions, um, Quite a lot of the time, a high percentage of the time, you can shock and surprise the actual game and shock and surprise yourself. So that's how to build your chess stamina. It's not about volume, it's about the quality of your game. And it's not saying you're going to do the best top quality game in the world. It's about right here, right now, what is the opportunity that is afforded to you?